Hey, so here we are, we're on leap day. Uh, happens very rarely, it's kind of a weird extra day we get, and I wanted to do something different and uh, something new. So I'm launching this Movie Figure Madness segment, where we're gonna be looking at movie toys that come out around the launch of films, uh, and they either land or they miss <laughs> in terms of how they are. You know, it's the toy companies and the, the studios trying to capitalize on the movie by releasing toys alongside them. And we've seen some really strange ones over the years. Uh, and some ones that aren't that bad, actually. Um, and then some that are just really bizarre. So, um, yeah, we're going to be checking out everything in that range. Uh, you decide for yourselves, uh, you know, we'll tell you what we think, but uh, ultimately, you know, what makes sense. And I thought I'd start off with this X-Men line that came out and uh, around the launch of the movie, I think it was 2000, uh, we get these figures that are based on the likenesses of the actors and they have little gimmicks to go with them. Um, so this one was Tyler Mayne and Sabretooth, a uh, different design from what we were used to getting. Just like a couple years prior, we got this figure from Toy Biz, the same company. This is the animated version of Sabretooth, the one we grew up with when we watched the X-Men cartoon that ended out in uh, circa 97. Um, so this was the Sabretooth we had, the standard at this point, and then it jumped to this. So completely different look. Looks based on the, the movie likeness, so uh, a little bit different from uh, the comic books. And, uh, you know, it was a different way for Toy Biz to express themselves. There's a lot different on this character we'll get to. Um, but uh, yeah, why don't we check out the packaging completely oh, different overhaul of the packaging. It doesn't have that comic look with the character leaping off of it anymore. Uh, this is more... I mean, just completely redesigned. It's it's kind of basic. It's just focusing. It just says X-Men the movie on it. And then you get in the back, and then you see the whole range of characters that uh, are from the movie. It has basically everybody. Uh, I don't think they missed any of the movie characters. Some people got multiple versions of that character. Um, but yeah, it was, it was kind of different. Because um, then you went from, from this... I don't think these did that well. I really don't. And they didn't hold up over time. I was able to pick this up from a uh, used bookstore for $9. So I don't think it really held up its value over time. Because uh, you can see that they shifted right over here. When we got the X-Men Origins Wolverine, we got Sabretooth and um, Blob. But it's a comic book looking uh, look to them again. The aesthetic changed back to the comic book look. People, I guess, just didn't like the realism look. Uh, I mean, which isn't to say they don't now. Because you're seeing it in the Marvel Legends line where they're bringing back these uh, movie looks to these figures so yeah I guess they made a rebound but at the time the Toy Biz version did not quite land so why don't we hop in and check out this uh, bizarre figure here and the little gimmick that comes with it all right well first of all we got this X on the packaging that kind of came standard on everything it's it's kind of bolted in there there's nothing in it it's just this big X <laughs> so we're gonna ignore that as we open this um, it's a very awkward design. It reminds me of the Selects a little bit when it has this piece of cardboard on the side. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically all there is to that packaging. And I showed you that 360 that you can go back and check out if you wanted to see what these things look like in package. And then it's just really awkward to try to get this off the card um, with that extra part there. So I'm just going to break it. Uh, yeah, this is a challenge. Uh, to get this here. I, I try not to rip these things off and just tear pieces of cardboard apart while I get the packaging out, but this one is not allowing me to do that 90 degree cutting technique I usually do. Alright. And we are free. Okay. So we have that X of the door going to Cerebral uh, right here. Um, so that is the uh, the movie look there as well. And then we got our aged plastic here. And then we have our character here with his little buddy. So we'll, we'll check out Sabretooth first. And now what I said what is different here from the original like um, Toy Biz line, there's more articulation. Like if you remember Toy Biz, it was pretty much 5 POA. They had the legs and arms and that was really it. Go back and check out our Apocalypse review we did. Um, where we were doing a then and now segment of Apocalypse compared to modern Apocalypse uh, in the line, and you can see what I mean. Uh, and that was even further along that version, so it was even more basic when you get to Generation 1 Apocalypse. Uh, so yeah, he could bend his arms here, he could bend his knees, um, it looks like, yeah, the, even at the hip, so he's got, and then the ankles. So that's a lot of articulation for the time, <laughs> so interesting. So I think he has this like rubber band in him, 
or something that allows him to do this swiping motion. So that was basically all Sabretooth did. He didn't really have claws or anything. He just had long nails and he could do this swiping attack. Uh, so that is his function. It's the 90s, uh, or actually this was the early thousands. Everything kind of had a gimmick uh, at, around this point, and I think this was his gimmick here. Um, yeah, the, the shoulder just goes up and down. There's no other adjustment there. You can see the hair kind of draping off there. It's not a bad likeness of the guy. I mean, it's kind of hard to do because the, the hair was kind of everywhere. But uh, I think it's a decent likeness of him there with this angry face. Um, what is really a, a true bizarre gimmick here is this security guard that accompanies him. Um, I think this is from the climax of the film where they're in the, the Statue of Liberty. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> if you haven't seen it in 24 years, uh, uh, you know, that's on you. Uh, but yeah, there, essentially there was a bunch of security guards and they were attacking these guys. Or maybe this was from the, the train scene. I can't exactly remember. Um, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. Uh, but either way, he attacked some security guards at some point. Um, and that's what this, this guy is. It's just a random cannon fodder for you to, uh, to fight as Sabretooth. Um, he's even holding a donut. That's fun. Uh, so let's get... Uh, they really secure this guy in here. Like, uh, I guess because he has all these parts. But, uh, yeah. So essentially, you're supposed to be able to um, get this guy back together here. Uh, put on his part. He looks like a crash test dummy. He is. This dude is falling apart. Um, yeah. So I get him all back together here, and uh, he gets his legs. Let's see if we get him to stand. Essentially, he's a dude that is built on string. <laughs> so. He, it's like he doesn't have bones. Oh, there goes his hat. And uh, we'll, we'll try to tighten him up here as much as we can to get him to uh, to stand. Um, he, it's yeah, his parts are every which way. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. So we're able to tighten him up. We got him to stand. Uh, put his hat on. So basically, what you do is I showed you on the back of that packaging in here, and he doesn't like to wear this hat. Well, screw the hat. All right, uh, is you attack him and he's supposed to fall to pieces. Um, and it, it says on the packaging, knock out. Um, it's, you know, typically when you, when you knock somebody out, um, their head doesn't fall off, uh, typically. Uh, so uh, Sabretooth only seems to attack from the right. I can't get him to go to the left. So we'll do this, uh, we'll give this a trial here. We're gonna have him come here and then there we go. So he is uh, knocked out, uh, basically, at this point. Um, and if you can see him uh, in his little gimmick here, he is, you know, completely demolished. So uh, that is the, uh, yeah. So he has this pressure point on his chest that basically makes everything go limp. So he is destroyed at this point. <laughs> so that is the, uh, the feature you get here with this guy. Does not like this hat. Yeah, it just doesn't want to go on his head. So that was kind of a poor design. Uh, might as well, why don't, why didn't they just mold it onto the head? I mean, I guess it's one more thing that falls off when you hit him, but this is, is bizarre. <laughs> like, this is essentially a corpse. Um, and uh, they decided to include it with this, this children's toy at the time, um, it, where you could fight a security guard and just knock him out. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a lot more than knocked out. Um, this is destroyed. Uh, so kind of weird, um, but I, at the same time, it's kind of a fun little, a fun little gimmick that they included with this. They even gave him the donut. I don't understand that. If you can see that donut there, why is he holding the donut? <laughs> I had to go back and see the the scene. Like maybe the guy was holding a donut in the scene, but at least he stands, and that's a lot for a guy that's built on string. So, you know, give him a break. Um, and you can put his hat on there if you balance it just right. And then if you get, oh, there it goes. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I mean, he's tough to get to stand for a very long period of time. But uh, you kind of have to nail him right there in the chest to get him to explode right. Um, but you could do it. I believe in you. Uh, you're going to get the hand a little bit lower. And then, there we go. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's toast. Doesn't take much to set him off, but... That is basically the way this works. And then he's knocked out um, on the ground and then you could reset him. So interesting gimmick uh, that they included with this figure. Um, kind of cool. 
uh, I think, a little bit, but it also equally bizarre because he is, you know, essentially murdering somebody with this toy, uh, which at the time was kind of bizarre. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is uh, that is a, a time period kind of issue um, with the uh, with the more violent toys back then. I remember a lot of different lines that were quite violent uh, for toys. The crash test dummy line, I don't think would fly today. Uh, but that was fun. It was all about just destroying things. So uh, kind of cool uh, in that respect. But that is essentially the gimmicky movie toy of Sabretooth from the X-Men movie. All right. We hope you enjoyed us playing with this old toy. Uh, yeah, this it, one on the range of bad to, to good. It's it's kind of in the middle. It's weird. <laughs> it's uh um, yeah, it's not entirely, I don't think, if you wanted the subline of movie characters at the time, this is all you got. Like, right now, you could definitely get the Marvel Legends ones, and those are much better. Um, but, you know, at the time, this wasn't the worst design character. It looked much like the, the screen character. It had more articulation. Um, there was just only so much you could really do with it, though. Um, and then it had this really bizarre gimmick of utterly just murdering a security guard holding a donut. Uh, just making him explode. Uh, they <laughs> they could have just swung at him and knocked him over, but they added the gimmick of making this guy disassemble like a crash test dummy. So, <laughs> really weird choice they had at the time. But, uh, yeah. So we're going to put this on the weird range in terms of characters. It's not completely awful. Um, it was an interesting subline of characters, and um, it, it inspired the, the future line in the, in the Legends. Uh, but it is not something that is uh, quite amazing, that deserves its own sort of like celebration as a line. We'll, we'll try to show you some of those lines. Uh, so this is in the middle of the range. If you think otherwise, let me know. Uh, maybe you were really into this line and you collected the whole line. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear from somebody that collected the entire movie line of X-Men figures from Toy Biz. Um, if there's other gems out there that we missed. Uh, but this was one of the more interesting ones that we wanted to capture. So that's all for this time. Uh, we'll bring you more movie figure madness in the future when we have uh, when we have time. We have a busy slate ahead of us. We're getting into Ghostbusters month. It is going to start at the next review. So on Tuesday, we'll start you with Ghostbusters. The whole month will be Ghostbusters. Hopefully you won't be sick of Ghostbusters by the end of it. Uh, but after that, we're going to get right back into it. We have, uh, we're going to start off with that new Professor Perry 2-pack from NECA. Uh, we have that already. We're just going to wait until after Ghostbusters month. So uh, we'll be showing you guys that. And uh, there'll be plenty of other surprises in store as well. Uh, we're going to be showing you Mega Man. There's some great new Mega Man figures out there from Jada Toys. And there's a ton of other things as well. So I don't want to spoil the whole rest of the month. But March, Ghostbusters. There's going to be some really recent releases. There's going to be some releases from a couple years ago. And there's going to be some other really bizarre, interesting things I'm finding that are releasing right now for the film. So uh, check those out and uh, enjoy our Ghostbusters month. That is all for now. Like, subscribe, and follow. We'll see you guys next time.